with only 12 members of the original prototype class. They've done it really, really well, and it is a great model. I love the performance on the track. It's silky smooth. Hey there, great to see you. Welcome to Weir Yard. I'm Jenny Kirk, welcoming you up here to take a good close look at the new release of the Hellion Slim Jims in double O. These are the subclass 332, a very small subclass of 12 locomotives that were actually there to solve a problem within another problem for the southern region of British Rail. Let me explain. When British Railways were looking to uh, modernise their fleet and bring in diesel locomotives to replace the ageing steamers, one of the areas that was particularly difficult for them was the southern region of British Rail. Now elsewhere the Class 37 was very much the jack of all trades, but the southern region suffered one little bit of a legacy of lightly laid lines that really just couldn't take the axle loading of the Class 37s. So they needed something else, and that's where the Class 33 design came in. Born out of experiences of the Class 26 and 27, the Class 33 was a much uprated locomotive, giving the power requirements needed within a lighter axle loading Bobo chassis and body shell construction. But there was another problem, and this was the Tunbridge to Hastings line. Built to a very restricted loading gauge, it had been a problem even during steam days, and the Class 33s couldn't fit through there. So that's where the Slim Jims came in. A dedicated fleet of 12 that were built to a slightly more restricted loading gauge to get through that problem tunnel. It was a solution that was really quite neat and very effective. And the 33s as a whole were a super reliable locomotive design that saw them last to privatisation and beyond. So much so that uh, some of both the regular 33s and at least one of the Slim Jims is still on frontline service with West Coast Rail Company today. And it just shows that that was a great design born out of the necessity of not being able to use Class 37s. Hellion brought us the Class 33 in droves with a lot of uh, upgrades over their lifespan, and we have looked at one particular example that I got up here on Weir Yard. It was really quite an impressive factory-delivered weathering on that. But it's the turn of the Slim Jims, and Hellion have very, very kindly sent over for us to take a close look at one of those examples in the Rail Tour Dutch livery. So without further ado, let's take a close look and see if the Slim Jim matches up to expectations. Today's video comes in association with Trainomatic, makers of DCC decoders and accessories that are designed by enthusiasts for enthusiasts. Find the full range available to order now at tramfabrique.co.uk. Additional support comes from This is Clark Railworks and this is what we do. You'll know us from Ellis Clark Trains and you'll get the same friendly expertise with us too. We've got a huge range of pre-owned model railways from all your favourite manufacturers and maybe some you hadn't heard of before. It's the place to come for quality. We don't stock substandard models and everything we sell is fully tested and photographed by model railway experts. No matter whether you model double O gauge, N, HO or more, we have sought after models from all around the world with new listings added every weekday. Check out what's available now at ClarkRailworks.com and don't miss out on your latest logo. So it's an often neglected minor subclass that really did quite well born out of necessity, but does the Hellion model live up to expectations? We're going to take a good close look and we're also going to feature a full DCC fitting of this model, making use of the Train-O-Matic 21 pin decoder. But first I'd like to ask a huge favour. If you do like today's video, please tickle that like button and share it to social media as well. And if you haven't already done so, do please consider ringing that bell and subscribing to the channel. You can also help support the channel over on Patreon to keep making the videos that you want to see. And we've got multiple tiers of rewards and all of you guys are absolute legends that help the channel to keep on going. You can also become a channel member, which is another route to supporting the channel and getting unique perks into the deal as well. 
But back to today's review, and let's take a good close look at the Hellion 33-2 Slim Jims. The history of the Class 33 is an interesting one, and they were born out of the need for a machine of the versatility of the Class 37, but which could roam over some of the more lightly laid lines of the southern region, which precluded the use of the Class 37 locomotives. Out of the designs of the Class 26 and Class 27 that had been sent much further north to work, the Class 33 design was born. They had an uprated engine and were fitted with electric train heat and dual brakes from new, which actually contributed to making them a really useful machine and very long lasting without needing any major rebuilds during that time because of the forethought of the designers. And that was achieved within this body shell by actually doing away with the steam heating, which as it turned out, was a really quite good move because BR quickly moved on and majored on the electric train heat. However, over the southern region, there was one area where the Class 33 could not go, and that was on the Tonbridge branch that featured some rather restrictive tunnels. Now, these were built on the cheap in the 19th century and it actually proved very, very restrictive, even for the predecessors to British Rail. Now, eventually these tunnels were opened out in the 1980s, but not before the need for modern diesel traction had come to the fore, and that resulted in 12 of the Class 33s being built to a much narrower body shell to allow them to be able to fit through that tunnel, and thus, the Slim Jim, or Class 33-2, was born. And this has been a major omission in a number of different ready-to-run ranges, and certainly Hellion's range as well. They haven't been able to produce those 12 models until now. And finally, the Slim Jims have appeared from Hellion, and they very kindly sent over an example for us to take a good close look at here on the channel. On here we've got um, catalogue number 3388 and this is the BR Rail Tour Grey Yellow Class 33-2 as 33208 and you can see across the bottom there we've got this as DCC ready with a 21 pin decoder socket with working lights, sprung buffers, NEM coupling pockets and this is suitable for era 8. Now inside we get a comprehensive manual and that gives us a little bit of information about this subclass and uh, we ran through some of these details in the introduction and some of these actually despite the fact that the need for the narrower body went away when those tunnels were rebuilt uh, actually have lasted really really well and uh, still exist in West Coast Railways mainline fleet to this day. We've also got some information on body removal and DCC fitting and I'm going to be showing you how to do the full DCC fit later on in the video using the Trainomatic 21 pin decoder and we've got a link down below taking you to tramfabrique.co.uk to be able to find them. Now I'm going to move the uh, original 33 out of the way and let's get this locomotive out of the box in its uh, really quite eye-catching Dutch livery. It'll be interesting to compare it to the previous releases of the Class 33 and see just how Hellion have taken the opportunity to upgrade the model. Also in the pack we've got the detailing here and uh, we've got the three part snow plows for front and back and a number of other additional detail parts here which can be fitted by the user. Although uh, it is interesting that the buffer beam detail on this model does come factory fitted as you can see there. So really it's a case of um, just needing to remove some of these to be able to get the couplings that are in that pack into place. The first thing which immediately strikes me is these black splodges on the silver buffer heads. And this is 
actually perfectly prototypical. This represents the grease that would be used on the buffer heads to uh, cut out wear as these would slide and scrape whilst they were doing the job that they were designed for. And it's not something that I've seen until recently come as standard on models. And I actually think that that is a really nice touch, even though the rest of the model is pristine that buffer beam splotch is actually really quite effectively done. Now, looking at the profile of the model, you can see there that we've got a narrowing of the cab front and that extends down the full body sides. And uh, we also appear to have slightly different uh, shape to the roof as well. We've got a much gentler tumble home on the top of the roof to match the Slim Jim profile and that appears to have been captured perfectly here by Hellion. It's a subtle difference but one which could quite easily have been got so wrong and uh, it's great to see that these subtle differences have been incorporated to allow Hellion to produce these 12 models of the prototypes. The liveries which are available cover the Slim Jim 33-2 from its inception right through and includes a factory weathered blue version which uh, I have a friend who's bought that and says that it is one of the best livery applications that they have seen. But we're going to concentrate on the livery that Hellion have sent over. The rendition of the grey and yellow Dutch livery is crisp and sharp. And I'm just looking at the demarcation between the two colours. This is an area which can highlight any difficulties in livery application with a kind of fuzziness along the edge. But there's no sign of that on here and the body side uh, stripe is perfectly formed. Again that extends to the black at the front on the cab here and uh, again crisp and sharp. Looking down the side we've got the characteristic uh, cab windows in the half open position. This is something which uh, Hellion do seem to like to do and that is carried over from the previous version of the Class 33 and I think it does add just something a little bit different and highlights the way that these drop lights worked on the prototype locomotive. The doors aren't sprung but we've got full glazing, although we've got quite a high cab floor in there. There is a desk, but if you're going to put a driver figure in here, you're going to have to amputate him from the waist down because there really isn't a huge amount of space. This locomotive has the correct pattern of central headlight, which does differ from this uh, previous version there. And this is fully functional on this Slim Jim. The characteristic uh, bar head codes up here are represented and we've also got etched uh, windscreen wipers fitted at each of the corners and these do look really really good and again there we can see the correct profile of curves and that is actually a really complex system of curves that we've got up there over the cab roof and this is certainly an area that would be so easy to get wrong and to my eye that does look right. Turning it round and up, we've got the uh, grill on the roof and uh, it looks like there's a representation of a fan underneath. It's actually quite hard to see, but we can see through the grill. That is an etched piece and certainly looking back to uh, the uh, standard 33 again, it does look like there's a fan underneath there. We will take a look when we get the uh, body off the top. The roof panels, this is all uh, relief detail into the moulding, captured reasonably well. The rendition of the grey is perfectly done. We've got this great satin finish, which I think works really, really well if you want to keep the model as pristine. That's really easy to do. It's not um, offensive to the eye in any way. And if you want to weather it, it does provide a really good base to that. The horns are in these rooftop boxes and uh, again, these are moulded detail, but uh, do come out reasonably well on the model. Looking along the side, we've got these uh, roof grills, and I do like this diamond plate effect. I think it's just moulded on, but it's really well done, and the paint finish really picks that out well. Looking back to the side, again, body side grills. These are etched inserts. 
you can see there. It's difficult to see if there's any relief detail behind them, but certainly they do look right and uh, fit the part well. The rest of the body side is quite clean. We've got the uh, access door here and the uh, glazing here flush into the engine room. Handrails are metal and really quite durable. And we're just looking across the glazing at the other end, more metal handrails and that front curve as well. It's something that really stands out, the Class 33s, 26s and 27s, is they've got a much more curved front when you compare to the similar Class 25s and 24s, and that is captured really, really well. Again, we've got the printing of the double arrow and the 33208 on the side there. And then moving further down, these bogies have a lot of separate detail picked out from the springs in the red, the uh, uh, axle box covers in the yellow. We've got some of the pipe work picked out in white, and this really does massively improve the look of these bogies. Even white wall tires are provided, and looking further down, we've got all wheel drive, all wheel pickup from this Bobo chassis. Although some of the relief detail on the bogies is still fairly flat, but actually this uh, embellishments with the colour, which the uh, original 33 here just has the weathering, it really does bring out the detail and shows that there's a lot you can do with relief moulding of the plastic parts. And certainly that really is quite impressive. The additional embellishments also extend to the sides of the tanks and you can see more of this detail is picked out in different colours and that massively improves the model. I'm going to look back at the 33 that I've got here and you can see that uh, aside from a blast over with weathering which really does improve it and the white gauge, we don't have any of that pipework there picked out and the model doesn't look as good as a result. The battery boxes are a separate clicked on part and it does say in the uh, manual that if you want to fit sound then it's uh, a good place to install a speaker. Overhead warning flashes are correctly realized and then we've got that thin orange stripe along the top which really sets out the uh, demarcation between all of these different colors and brings this livery together. The uh, head code number 33 comes factory fitted on this model. And we've also got a shed code plate of 73A plus a blue star. And we've also got the marker lights. And these look to be fully glazed. And again, full buffer beam detail applied with separately picked out colors. Although if you want to use the uh, coupling, you're gonna have to at the very least trim some of this detail. I like the silver buffer heads, these are turned metal, and as the box said, they are sprung as described. We've got the correct pattern, really quite large uh, circular buffer heads. And all in all, certainly from the outside, we've got a great presentation here, and I think that all of this separately picked out stuff really has massively improved the model. Looking to the other end, we've got the uh, lozenge-shaped logo, and that is really sharply printed. It's not an etched part, but to be honest, it doesn't need to be. That is really well realized. So we come now to the DCC fitting part, and this is a 21 pin chassis. So I'm gonna be using the Trainomatic 21 pin decoder. We've got a link for them in the description box, but any NMRA standard 21 pin decoder will work just fine with these models. Uh, they just need the motor function control, and then they have a white marker light in the forward direction, which switches ends when you switch the direction of the locomotive. So it's not especially taxing on the different functions. And this is an upgrade from this previous model where we only had an eight pin decoder and didn't appear to have any working directional lights. There's no screws on this model, so no appearance of the screwdriver, at least just yet. And it's just a case of get your fingernails underneath the body sides and then just gently pull it apart and you'll feel the chassis start to drop. Turn it around and let's do the same for the other end. And make sure 
you're doing this over something like a, a workbench because you don't want the chassis to just drop out and fall on the ground. There's no additional wiring up into the body on this. And what we can see here is there is a representation of that rooftop fan. We did mention that in the uh, review. Looking further inside, we've got these uh, cab interiors. They can be removed, but it will involve removing these glazing bars as well. Once we've got the body off, we can see inside the neat layout of the uh, PCB on here. The 21 pin socket is in the center here with a uh, blanking plug and then we've got the motor control plugged in just on a uh, really quite handy JST connector and we've also got a loose wire here this goes to the speaker if you should fit one you do get the plug and the wires and they are protected at the end so there's no risk of any shorts. What really is interesting though is that uh, we've got a lot of extra plug sockets on this and I checked with Hellion and they say this is because the PCB is common to quite a few different models. Uh, this model doesn't use these even though it's got plugs for cab lights, red tail lights which the 33 never had in practice. The white lights are plugged in just on a JST connector and again we've got pickups from each bogey plugged in too. So really quite an easy board to deal with. And if you don't want the lighting to be on, we've got a handy switch here so you can turn that lighting off if you need to. Now this is the point where I'm gonna get my uh, jeweler's screwdriver just to very, very carefully remove the 21 pin blanking plate a little bit at one side and then a little bit at the other and the blanking plate just lifts off. We can then replace that. You can see there that those wires for the speaker, if you should fit one, are just tucked round and out of the way. I'm just going to leave them there, uh, making sure that that wire doesn't get caught up in the pins. I'm going to very gently push down the 21 pin decoder. Now you don't need to force it, it should just slide right on absolutely fine. Now interestingly enough, and I have tested this, if you want to fit as a bit of a project working cab lights onto this model, then that is perfectly easy to do. And uh, I actually wired up some uh, LEDs on a board which I had spare and the same plugs that this PCB uses can be bought as spare parts from DCC Concepts. These are the same that they use for their Alpha Mimic system. So if you want to add lighting to this, it is ridiculously easy to do that because we get this fully functional, uh, I think it's got 10 different lighting function board, but if you're going to go above, the first four lighting functions of which the first two are the directional lighting, then you will need to think about the type of decoder that it needs, whether it needs full power or logic level. Um, so just something to bear in mind. Once we've got that in, that will be by default on uh, number three. And uh, let's just make sure that we get the body the right way round. Pro tip for you, the 33 is the front and the two white bars is the back and it's just simply a case of sliding the body back over the chassis and then you'll hear it click into place and that is back and secure and there we have our model DCC fitted. Fitting couplings is quite easy. I've just trimmed off some of the pipe work just so it doesn't foul the coupling as the bogey moves. And then these come in the extra pack. They feature cranked couplings, which uh, you just then very carefully slide into the NEM pocket and push them all the way through and you'll feel them click. And just to uh, double check on coupling heights, and that is about right just looking at that there. So the cranked couplings on these do give us the correct height for those. So it's now off to the track if you want to program it we can put it on the programming track first 
and let's check out its haulage capacity. In the manual, uh, Hellion says that 20 coaches on level track should be pretty easy. There's a lot of weight in this. We've got a full die cast chassis, which you saw when the body is off. And we've got all wheel pickup, all wheel drive from a centrally mounted motor that drives the uh, transmission through bogey towers at either end and flexible drive shafts. So we should get a pretty powerful performer from this model. Running on DC, I had this model up on my rolling road and it performed faultlessly straight out of the box. Whilst Hellion recommend that you have a period of running in, it didn't feel like it actually particularly needed it and this is a really sweet motor and transmission arrangement. Lighting on the model features LEDs and is really quite bright, although you can in the CVs tone that down if you find it a little bit too bright. One of the criticisms that has in the past been leveled against Hellion is really, really dim directional lighting. And this goes a long way to massively improve that. And it's very welcome to see. The additional lighting functions on the PCB board are actually fully functional. And I found it possible to have a play around with these and very easily install extra LEDs if you want for yourself a little bit of a project. On the back of the locomotive, I was able to install in this way red tail lights, although this is not strictly prototypical. It's just a case of I did it because they were there using the auxiliary out one and two that are hard on the PCB. It was incredibly easy to set this up so that uh, it uh, just worked. DCC, once we had the model on the track, it was incredibly good at slow speed performing. As you can see here, the pickup from a standing start really was silky smooth and there was no evidence of cogging or jerking. And this is with the out of the box settings with the Trainomatic decoder. In both directions, it was just a really sure footed performer. And there's no evidence that this model would require a stay alive in any way. The pickups really are quite positive and that uh, high traction weight ensures that this is even down to a crawl, an incredible performer in the shunting yard. When it came to running on the main track, the locomotive just pulled away with my very, very long rake of coal wagons like they weren't even there. The really good weight and all wheel drive made sure that there was no hint of wheel slippage and the locomotive just kept on going, giving a sense that it would quite happily pull the same again, if not more, without any issues whatsoever. And it's something that's becoming a hallmark of some of these Hellion Bobo diesels that they really, there isn't anything that will stop them on the track. Performance was smooth, even at low speeds, there was no stuttering or cogging, and even over problem track work that has foxed other locomotives in my fleet, there was no sense that this locomotive even contemplated needing a stay alive, and with just the basic decoder in play, it really was a faultless performer. On the torture test track, it took in the gradients and changes of gradients really quite well, with no issues with flange climb or otherwise. The only area where it came in for a little bit of a small criticism was on the radius one curve section. It had a tendency to push the wagon it was pulling off to one side and push it off the track. But radius one really is quite tight and is a little bit out of the sphere of what these locomotives would ever prototypically be seen on. So it's really only the tightest of layout curves that will cause any kind of an issue. So we come now to the scores. First up is build quality, and the locomotive does feel very well put together with the detailing that's on it staying put where it needs to be at all times. Even the windscreen wipers were very, very robust and the glazing does feel like it could be pushed in with uh, unsympathetic handling, but there was no sign of it doing that on this model. There's not a huge amount of separately applied detail, but what there is, is very robust. 
When it comes to the bogies, they are a little bit more simplistic, but certainly improved tremendously by the finish that Hellion have added to them. The battery boxes on the underside, though, do look a bit on the plasticky side, and they do feel a little bit loose and can be just pushed around from side to side, but that is a fairly minor gripe. So I'm going to give this a 9.1. When it comes to running, as we already saw in the video, this really was an incredible performer. With the only thing that I could really look to fault on its running quality was that pushing wagons to one side off the track on the tightest of curves, and it really is only a minor gripe. So I'll give this a 9.9. .9. On DCC fitting and innovation, it is very simple to fit this model with a DCC decoder. And due to very careful setup of weight, pickups and such like, it is a very reliable performer. But it does feel a little bit of a disappointment that more hasn't been made of the lighting functions which are available on that PCB board, albeit it's designed for being common across a great number of items in the Hellion range. I was able to show that it is possible to fit this model with additional lighting very, very easily. And it did raise the question why Hellion hadn't done something like working cab lights, even at the very least. There are connectors on the board for these. And the cabs really, I suppose, are quite simplistic in there. And it is an area that I would hope that Hellion might look at in the future to upgrade what is a really quite good model. So I'm afraid I can only give this 7.0. And that's really down to the fact that we're looking at a very basic DCC control on this model when there could have been quite a bit more. On accuracy and quality of finish, the model is a really great representation of the Slim Jim 33-2s. There's a very marked difference when you hold this up against the regular 33, and Hellion have captured that uh, body side changes really, really well, including some of the quite complex curves around the tops of the cabs, and that different radius that the top of the body has where the roof meets the body side. Below the sole bar, though, this model is looking a little bit more simplistic than compared with a lot of modern models. The bogies and the battery boxes do feel a little bit on the plasticky side, although it's quite clear that the uh, ready weathered versions do improve this dramatically, and certainly on this model, the picked out detailing goes a long, long way to get the very best out of this model. But all in all, I'm going to give this an 8.5. On value for money, I can find the model for around a shade under the £170 mark, and that's for the DCC Ready version. This goes up to a £186, I'm finding, the faded and weathered version, and this is 33211. And I have to say that that, from the photographs that I've seen, and from the testimony from people I know who've bought one, is very much the standout of this production run. The paint finish that Hellion have applied to that really does look perfect and it has to be said that the weathering that Hellion are producing from their factory is really really good. I also like such little tiny details like the uh, grease splodges on the buffers. It adds a huge amount and it's nice to see the attention to detail that Hellion are adding with these. But below the sole bar is the Achilles heel of the 33, with a very plasticky finish on some of the battery box and bogey side details. It's not terrible, but certainly for the price tag, it does feel a little bit like there are areas that could be warmed over on this model to really go a long way to bring it up to modern standards. And I'm going to give this an 8.3. And that still gives us a respectable 42.8 out of 50 for the Hellion Slim Jim. With only 12 members of the original prototype class, it has to be said that nobody would have thought the worse of Hellion if they hadn't bothered to uh, provide us with this particular version. But they have, and they've done it really, really well. And it is, overall, a great model. I love the performance on the track. 
it's silky smooth and it does lead the way in that respect. It's showing other manufacturers that you really can make a model that doesn't need a stay alive that just works and that's what we've got here with this model. I hope you really enjoyed today's video and found it informative and don't forget that we've got a link down below that helps you find not just the model that you saw in today's video but all of the other versions that are available at what we believe to be a very competitive price. I'd also love to hear from you in the comments section down below. What do you think of this Slim Jim model? Is this something that perhaps you remember with great fondness from back in the day? And uh, what do you think of the model? Is this something that Hellion have got it on the money? Or are there areas that you think should be improved? Have you had a go on your own model at doing some of those lighting upgrades that I briefly talked about in today's video? I'd love to hear from you and get any feedback that you think would help any other modelers in uh, their use of this Hellion 33.2. And thank you to Hellion for sending over a review sample to enable us to have a good close look. Don't forget that you can also head on over to Patreon and help support the channel with multiple tiers of rewards. Or you could also become a channel member with a different unique perks available. And it's a great way to help support the channel to keep making the videos that you want to see. Please like, share, subscribe, and also check out the merch store if you want to uh, look for a great hoodie, t-shirt, mug, or more. But until next time, this is me, Jenny Kirk, saying... You take great care of yourself. Happy modelling. Bye for now. Today's video comes in association with Trainomatic, makers of DCT decoders and accessories that are designed by enthusiasts for enthusiasts. Find the full range available to order now at tramfabrique.co.uk. Additional support is provided by... This is Clark Railworks and this is what we do. You'll know us from Ellis Clark Trains and you'll get the same friendly expertise with us too. We've got a huge range of pre-owned model railways from all your favourite manufacturers and maybe some you hadn't heard of before. It's the place to come for quality. We don't stock substandard models and everything we sell is fully tested and photographed by model railway experts. No matter whether you model double O gauge, N, HO or more, we have sought after models from all around the world with new listings added every weekday. Check out what's available now at ClarkRailworks.com and don't miss out on your latest logo. I'd like to send out a huge thanks to everybody who supports me on Patreon, but a special thanks go out to Anthony Kidson, Offshore Allen, Michael Lockie, Helen Sink, Gary Lewis, David Quinn, Sparky107107, George Botterini, Chris Moss, Robert Steers, Sam Yates, Dale Williams, John N. from NC, NYM Arish, Jonathan Foster, Peter, Clifford Ison, Larry W. Grant, NI Railways 4000 Class, Ian Coulson, Alan Dickerson, Eddie Papair, Karen Nicholl, Medwin Williams, Crossways Point Junction, 3B Rail, Jennifer Horton, Michael Rose, Trains with Nick, and Simon Snow. Thank you. Without you guys, I couldn't do this.